Welcome back to City Skylines, my beautiful friend! Today we shall be talking about traffic, roads and intersections that the game has to offer. There are four main types of roads in the game. Two-lane roads, which are the most basic and cheapest roads, they are suitable for low traffic, meaning it would be best to use them for low-density residential and commercial areas. Cars that use this road type can go up to 40 in speed, while the gravel type allows 30. You can build them to be two or one-way roads and add two types of decorations to them. Using the decorated roads increases the maintenance cost but lowers noise pollution. Next we have four-lane roads. These support medium traffic and cars that use them can go up to 50 speed. After some testing I would advise against using this type of road because it always has traffic lights when making intersections and it causes drastic traffic congestion in most cases. The biggest and priciest roads would be the 6 lane roads. These support heavy traffic and 60 speed. They work similarly to the 2 lane roads. You can notice that they have the 2 way road type and the 1 way road type. And finally highways. The highway unlocks when you reach the boom town achievement, approximately at 2.6 thousand citizens depending on your map and they are the fastest, allowing 100 speed. They only go one way meaning you will need to build two separate highways for both directions. You can build them using the sound barrier, which will greatly reduce noise pollution. And you can use highway ramps to connect the highway with city streets. When building highways you cannot make 90 degree corners and you cannot zone the areas around it. I would have to disagree with this because here in Croatia there are plenty of buildings right next to the highways. But then again, it is Croatia we're talking about. You also have one more tab, which is labeled intersections. These also unlock when you reach the Boomtown achievement, and they are basically preset intersections that you can use when building your city. You have two roundabouts, a cloverleaf intersection and a three-way intersection. After using all of these, I would recommend using the small roundabout and the cloverleaf intersections. The small roundabout is very good for low-density residences, as it automatically adds trees and zonable areas all around it. The cloverleaf intersection gives you the ability to quickly connect four sides of the map while maintaining pretty good traffic flow. The large roundabout and the three-way intersections are simply not very optimized for the way traffic works in the game, at least not for now. Let's talk a bit about road building and custom intersections. When you build roads, it is very important to understand the difference between connecting and extending one-way and two-way roads. When you are connecting two-way roads, it doesn't matter from which side you extend or connect them, since they go two ways always. But when connecting and extending one-way roads, you have to be careful. Here is an example with the highway, which is a one-way road. If you create a highway that goes to the left and then go to the left side of the map, and connect another highway directly to it, going from left to right, you will notice that the connection sign doesn't go away and the road arrows point at each other. This means that whenever you're building one-way roads, you have to connect and extend them from the same direction. This works with both two-lane and six-lane one-way roads. You are able to create straight, curved and freeform roads. The last icon gives you the ability to upgrade existing roads. The only thing that you need to understand here is that you cannot upgrade two-way to one-way roads and vice versa. Your roads are upgradable only if they have the same lane type. Custom intersections are next. First we will take a look at two-lane roads and how they behave when creating intersections. It is important to note that two-lane roads never create any traffic lights when making intersections, which greatly helps with traffic flow. No matter which type of two-lane road you connect, you will never have any traffic lights. Four-lane roads always create traffic lights when making intersections and they are very shitty as I mentioned before, so try not to use them. As for the six-lane roads, things get a tiny bit complicated. Let's take a two-way six-lane road for an example first. If you choose to connect a two-way road to it, going in or out, traffic lights will appear. But when connecting one-way roads to it, only the roads going in will create traffic lights. One-way roads going out will never have traffic lights, which is very nice. Highways also never create traffic lights, but they don't create zoning areas, they cause a lot of noise pollution and they cost the same as the 6-lane road. 
so you should definitely not use them for anything else other than connecting different regions of your city. And finally, let's talk about traffic. First thing that you need to remember, city service vehicles and industry trucks will stop in lane to do their work, and that will completely halt the line in question. The cars that are waiting in that line will not attempt to bypass the blockage, and they will wait until it is cleared. Next thing worth mentioning is the way vehicles prioritize lanes. Here I have an example of an intersection using a main two-way six-lane road and a couple of one-way two-lane roads. The cars that want to turn right at the first intersection will never use the left lane. They will immediately go to the middle lane if they want to turn right and visit the buildings to the left, and they will go to the right lane to use the buildings on the right. The cars that want to use the second intersection will use either the left or the middle lane. They will use the middle lane if they want to go right and the left lane if they want to go left after using the second intersection. You can see that it works very well, but in case you have a lot of cars in the middle and right lane clogging the traffic and your car wants to go to the right in the second intersection, that car will stop and wait in the middle lane instead of turning to the left lane and bypassing the congestion. The traffic is pretty much scripted and it doesn't care much about changing lanes in case of an issue. This might get fixed in the future, but currently your cars will prioritize lanes according to the intersections and not the lane traffic. There is a handy way of spreading your traffic to prevent congestion. If you have a highway going directly into your city area, use a cross intersection with two lane one way roads. This way all of your cars will prioritize different lanes, but be careful and try to avoid building structures right next to the intersection turning point. This is important because in case you have a city service vehicle blocking the way, the entire highway lane will get blocked as well. Besides, it is a highway, so it will also create noise pollution, so you should definitely start zoning a bit further from it. The last thing we will talk about is bridges. You can create a bridge by elevating the road above the ground using page up and down keys. Your bridges can go up 5 levels and there is a certain slope you can't build at. So if you create a 5 level bridge base, you will need a lot of space to lower that road back down, since the slope will be too high. The 5 level bridge will be higher than your highest building, so you can use that to create massive intersections above your city. So in the end, I would suggest using 2 lane 1 way roads and 6 way roads with a lot of bridge intersections connected to your highways. Your city will always have some red areas, try to have as little traffic lights as possible and you will eventually be fine. I hope you are satisfied with what you learned from this video, if you are not, then I give you permission to spank me. I don't know what will we do in the next tutorial, let me know what would you like to see. Thanks for watching and remember, your glorious Lord Petard loves you.